Hello all you Pixel people, I am Pixel and welcome back to part 4 of the Project Spark tutorial series. In the previous episode we worked on a stamina bar, previous to that we worked on a first person movement system, and previous to that we worked on basically sculpting this map. Now what we're going to do in this episode is a little bit different, we're going to move away from the brains for a little while and we're also going to move away from the basic construction tools and what we're going to do is look at props and the main concept, well the main focus of today's episode is to make a working torch with a, a light which gives off light, it flickers like a flame, the right colours and then we're going to look at being able to save it as an assembly so we can use it in other maps and we've got a decent way of just being able to select our finished product and put it in the map multiple times whenever we like and before we do, no, not before, we'll actually just jump straight into it. I have to be honest with you guys, this is the part that I am actually least experienced with. I've done a lot of stuff with brains, and I've done a lot of world editing and placing props, but when it actually comes to building my own assemblies, I may make a few mistakes. But, I am confident that in this episode, we will figure this out, and we will get it done, so, uh, let's get to this. So, we click on the prop icon, and then we click on this little arrow here, and this will bring up our group of props basically and what we want to do is make a torch so we're just going to search for torch unfortunately there is not a lot of options currently out I mean I'm assuming that Project Spark will release an awful lot more assets in future but right now we've got one torch we've got a lantern as well but just one torch we want that flame we want that flicker so uh, we're going to be using this now if we place it down and we pull it out of the ground because we don't want it clipping and then click play I'll show you what happens That's no good. I need it to, to light up and if I walk into it, I'll just push it around the ground. And the reason for this is that by default, a lot of the equipable items or a lot of the smaller items in general have got physics properties, which mean that it will just fall to the ground. So what we do is we click on the torch and then we click on this little gear icon. We've not used this yet. When we click on that, we get this little menu up here. And it goes through an awful lot of different options like replace the mesh or replace the item or clone it or delete it. And we got the brain which will take us to this brain. Which we're actually going to delete because we don't need any of this. We're not going to be equipping it at all. So we can get rid of that. It's just making it a little bit cleaner that's all guys. And then we have got the properties which we do want. And down here we've got physics. Now when we click on physics you can see we've got a physics type here and we've got tumbling which basically means it falls, it reacts normally. Or we've got fixed. Or we've got character. But that, I think that, I haven't tested this but I'm assuming the character just means it has the same physics as your character at the moment. I have no idea. But uh, we'll look into that in future when we actually start to need to use it. So right now we're going to stick it onto fixed. And then when we actually test. There we go. We've got a floating torch. And it's not, it is colliding me, but I'm clipping in because of the camera, which it's just a bit of an issue with the game. Nothing we can actually really do about that without making bigger bounding boxes, which I'm not 100% certain how to do. I'm assuming I could do it with an invisible cylinder, but it, it's not that important. It's going to be a lot more effort than it's actually worth to fix that. So then, we've got it floating there, which is cool. Now to add, the flame to this, what we're going to do is click on this gear icon again. Sorry, my headphone wire keeps getting caught on everything today. And uh, we're going to go to the properties brain. We don't want to go to this brain because this will take us to the brain where we actually start coding. We just want to go to properties and brain. And because this is where we can turn the power on. And already we've got a flame. Which you'd, you'd assume, like I assumed at first, and it, it confused me a little bit, that actually what we'll do is we'll turn off the lights. Literally, the uh, we'll turn it to night. Then we'll test. And we can see the flame, but there is absolutely no light coming off this. And this is because we haven't actually attached a light bulb. There's only one type of light which we can actually edit in this game, and that requires... Now I will, there's multiple ways of doing this, you could attach it directly but I'm going to attach it manually later for, for reasons which I will explain later, I don't want to overcomplicate this bit. But right now we're going to search for light, and we'll get a light bulb. 
stick the light bulb close to it. We're going to line this up now anyway, so it wasn't important if it was a little bit far away. Lining it up can be a little bit of a pain. You can use a snap grid function, but with a light bulb, it's not that important. But we will be using that later when we're going to extend this torch. It's a little bit short at the moment. So we'll scale it down just so uh, it doesn't make a difference on how big the actual model scale is. And let's see where we've got it lined up. Right, we can put it a little bit this way. Okay, so now when we test it, it appears that there's light coming off it. The light is kind of the wrong colour. And it's a constant light where really a torch should be flickering. And to fix that, we just need to go into lights properties by clicking on the gear icon again. But having the light selected, the gear icon. And we can zoom out a little bit just so we can see the effect of what's going on. And we just do this with the normal controls like you're controlling the camera as standard in editing mode. And then we go to properties, appearance, and we've got light. Now under light we can have stable, flickering, which is what we want to use. But we've also got a wave pulse, a square pulse, which I'm assuming is just a much sharper pulse, and a linear pulse, which I... It looks like wave pulse to me. I'm not sure. And we've got stable, which is a constant light. We're actually going to be using flickering. Now, intensity is how bright this light is, but not how far the light travels. This is something which is a little bit different in real life. So we can have really bright intensity. Look, it's, it's blinding us. But it's not going very far. But we can change that by playing with the range. We can have it really far, and we should be able to see it pulling slowly, right? So, look, we've, we've seen it pull in. Okay, so what I'm thinking is... We, we, oops. We don't want the intensity that high. We want the intensity. If you go into the minuses, it's literally pitch black. It doesn't really work that well. So, um, if we have a 1.5 intensity, so we want it to be quite a bright light at the source. But what we need to do is really minimize how far the actual light can spread. Like, if we just click on the range, we can actually set a number. I'm thinking 7.5, just as an estimate. So it's bright at the spot, but the light dies off quite quickly. And this is good if you want to put lots of torches around, just to make it look like there's a, a constant stream of light. But if you wanted to put them far apart, then you can just literally increase this. So like if we went up to 17.5, the range is very much increased, but I'm thinking, actually, we're just going to stick with 10. 10. No, 12.5. No, 7.5. 7.5 we'll stick with. This kind of stuff, you can experiment all the way through your actual development, so it's not really an issue. I just want to try and get a decent looking one right for the start, just to demonstrate. And then on the color, we obviously choose the color of the light, so we can even have a really strange magical pink light but in general no we want to go to the oranges and the yellows and maybe work towards a decent we want it to be a little bit more saturated than what you think because in the real build we're gonna actually turn saturation down to make everything else look desaturated um so we want the light saturation to be as saturated as we can have it right now because it's only going to get minimized later so this might look a little bit red i'll actually demonstrate this just to uh to show you so this looks very red now, but if we go to the world settings and have it on visual filter desaturated like we're going to, you'll notice it's not as bright, horrible pink. It's still a little bit red in all honesty, but we'll, we'll leave it on desaturated now just so we can actually test it properly. Click back on the icons, pull out, properties, appearance, light, and then we'll just slightly yell this up a little bit there we go and then when we test it what you see is we're getting a decent effect we're getting a decent lighting effect and I have tested the uh, the, the stuttering that you may be able to see on the camera now guys and it is OBS just being a pain in the bottom and it runs totally fine as soon as I stop recording so you should have no issues it's, it's as we get more complicated, I might have to turn the quality down a little bit just to get it to run smoothly. So, it's nice and dark. Actually, we're just going to uh, 
finish off building this now because I want to actually show you how we do the assembly stuff. So, what we're going to do now is... Um... I'm, I'm being silly because I'm just thinking about do we actually make the light more accurate right now or do we just move on with stuff and I'm thinking move on with stuff. So what we're going to do is come to the prop tool at the bottom and if you click this little arrow you get some more options like usually we get multi-edit, power, attach and what we're going to be doing this time is using attach because we want to attach the light to the to the torch basically but still have the ability to edit both of them. If we glued these together, like for instance, we'll do that now, so we'll, we'll glue these. So now these are one item. All of a sudden, I have, oops, come on, let me do it. All right, so now it's glued. I literally don't have the options to play with a light or anything anymore. I can turn it all on or off, but it's not what we want to do, so now what we have to do is click on this gear icon again and unglue. So now they're two separate ob objects again. And we are going to just deselect it all. Attach. Now, I can't remember which way we do this. Basically, if I attach, if I click this first, then this, do I attach the light bulb to that or am I attaching the torch, the light bulb, and this is important for when we're moving around the objects later, believe it or not, it can be a real pain. So we're going to try both. I, I'm assuming we attach light bulb to this, we click the light bulb first. Attach, light bulb to the torch, and now when we just click on the normal prop edit, and we move the torch, like so, yep, yeah. so you attach you click on the thing that you want to attach to the other thing first, you don't do it the other way around. If we did it the other way around, it'd be like clicking on this. The light moves, but the torch doesn't. Okay, so it's about equal, that's fine. So now we've got these attached, we can uh, raise this up. And the reason we're doing this is this torch, like, if we was to put it into the ground here... Oops. Ah. Oh. I still have frustrations with this editing camera, to be honest, guys. And if we put it into the ground so it looks like it was in the ground, then click play. It's like a diddy torch. It's a little bit diddy. Oh, and this happens. When we attach something, we then need to change its visibility. So we will uh, change that in a second. That's why we can see the bulb. And the way we do that is we click on this little light bulb. Click on the gear icon, click on properties, appearance, visible, off. And now, we can't see that light bulb again. So like I said, this torch is a little bit short, so we want to extend it. Unfortunately, having doing, done a few tests, there's not really an ideal way of doing this. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to open up the prop gallery. Again, and we're going to search for post because it's one rustic post, which is uh, the closest we're going to get to an extension to the torch. It's not going to be perfect, but it will be a lot better than what you're probably expecting it to be. So, look at the size of it. Look at the size of that thing. So, this little icon here, the two squares, this is a scaling icon, so we can make it bigger or smaller. I think the minimum we can the minimum we can go is 20%. And then what we're going to do is we're going to click on this, the, the grid snap-on. And what this does is normally I can move it like this, nice and smoothly. If I click this, everything moves in big chunks. Which is good if you want to line things up. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and move this to... Are we underneath this? Do we need to move this as well on the grid to line it up? Okay. So there's two ways of doing this. I haven't tried it this way actually, and I'm actually liking the look of it already. So we lower this down a little bit. Oh, I pressed on my options, ignore that. So sensitive, come on camera, slow down. Let me line up. So we turn the grid off again, so we can line this up a little bit. 
That's pretty aligned, actually. It's not too bad. This is like a, a more time-consuming thing than anything else. So we could have it like this, where we click play. It's not perfect, but it's not bad. I actually kind of like the idea of this. But uh, what I've been doing in my tests is I've been spinning this post upside down. So it was connecting through the small end. But I'm actually liking this a little bit better. So I think I'm going to leave it like this. I will show you how to do it though, just so you know. So we click on edit again. Click on the snap grid on. And then we click on this little green bit, which is the rotation tool. And it'll pull up this. And then we basically grab the red. And we flip, flip, flip. And then we click on the flame. And pull up, up up and then we click play this is how I was doing it originally because that way we could hide this little hook underneath the ground so it didn't look as obvious but I actually don't, I don't know I, I kind of like the style that we just had a second ago so we're gonna keep it like that so we've got the grid still on Come on, I missed there we go red again boom 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 flame down oh Oh, grab the wrong thing. Down. All right, is that still attached in a decent position? It's not bad. I mean, you don't understand how close we are now. This is as close as the camera can actually ever get before it clips out. So we don't need to be that accurate. We'll turn this off. I'm just going to tweak it a tiny little bit. Okay. Play again, just to make sure it's still lined up. And we've got our torch. So we're going to have to attach these now. We can have to do this via gluing, but then if we glue, we lose the ability to switch on the torch or turn it off, should I say. So we're going to do the attachment once again. And we'll do that by clicking on this icon again, going to attachment, and we want to attach this to the torch. Now, again, we've still got the issue that that means that when we are editing stuff, like so, if we grab the bottom, we have issues. Can I control Z that? Oh no. Don't do what it ever happened. Right. It doesn't need to be perfect for this. So as you can see, we, we need to grab the torch and when we move the torch, it all moves and we can rotate through this and we've got the, the final working thing. Does this mean that the light's visible again at the top? No, that seems to be working okay. So, we've we built a basic torch, guys, which is working in the game world, which is cool, right? Um, but do we want to do this for every single time we want to make a torch? We could, in theory, just multi-edit, grab it all, control copy, control paste, and then move them around. But there is an easy way of doing this, and what we do is we click on multi-edit. We click on all aspects, so it's all got, a, as that light bulb got a purple glow, I couldn't see, to be honest. I think it has. Yes, it did. And now we click save as. We're going to give it a decent name. We're going to call it Pixel Twitch version 1 Torch. Okay, we're going to add a little bit of description. Basic Torch. And then in brackets, no function. And the reason we say no function is there's nothing in its brain. There's no way of turning it on and off. It's basically just a torch that we can see. And um, we choose a screenshot. So we're going to line this up, try and get our character out of view. Come on. Come on. That'll do. Take screenshot. We'll add tag, and do we have light under L? Light. Do we have torch? Torch, 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 torch. And do we have assembly? And we'll put horror on here as well, just so we... Then we can search by tag later on, it'll just make things a lot, lot easier. So, horror. And description. We've got that. Tag name. Dun, dun, dun. Save. Come on. 
Okay. I think that little spark thing means that it has just saved it. I, I'm not 100% certain. So we'll move our character out of the way. We'll test it and make sure it's still all working. Okay, so it seems to be working. I mean, this connection doesn't look too bad. It looks almost natural. Like it was supposed to be like that for a torch. I'm quite happy with that, to be honest. And now, if we go to this and go to assemblies and remove this. Like, that was a previous test that I did. And where was it? Pixel Twitch Torch version 1. And now, we can place this. Where's a nice dark area? This is quite dark, isn't it? So what we're going to do is we'll place three of these around this area. At the front, actually. One. Two. Can we fit four here? Four. Okay, and now to make this a little bit more authentic, what we need to do is click on the middle one, like I said, they're all attached via the middle. Click on this rotation tool, miss that. Click on the rotation tool, and then we're gonna rotate. I've got the wrong thing selected, click. Okay, there we go. And we can just rotate this a little bit. Just to make sure they're not perfect. Because you wouldn't see vertical lines out in the wild where people have put posts. Because over time, soil subsides. And everything moves like that. So you want it to be as, not realistic, but as believable, I believe the word is, as humanly possible. Let's bend that one back a little bit. And then this one, we will rotate a lot. And then flip this way just a few pieces that seems good and now when we test this guys we can walk over to our torches I am going to change the sprint time because when I've been doing a few tests it's been a pain in the bottom uh, but as you can see it's not perfect right now because I, I maybe should have had the range a little bit higher on these lights before I saved it but I could always delete this and uh, start it again so it's not a massive problem. And we've got some nice basic torches. I think in the next episode, we're going to use what we've learned here to actually attach a torch to our first person camera. And actually have our own light source at all times. So these can be a little bit better. Maybe have a sanity system in future where the closer we are to the next light, the, the more safe we are in the game world. I'm not sure. I'm just throwing some ideas around now. Oh, look, I messed up a little bit. I'm sure we'll be okay, guys. I'm sure it'll be okay. So, we move that out of the way. There we are, guys. We have created a basic torch, which I'm going to save this right now so you can use it. Um, oh, yeah, edit. And then we're going to go to... I'm going to save this while you're here. Save. And then we're going to change the name to number four. Description. Stamina bar. Oh, well, I need to just drag this to the end. It's a little bit time consuming. I wish it had a proper text bar. Like a big text space. Now, with night time and working torch. And screenshots. We'll pull this down. We want to get a nice screenshot. You know, convince people I haven't seen it to actually click. There we go. A little bit higher. Take a screenshot. There we go. It's still under horror. We've got the tags the same. Save and share. And we are going to override my original sandbox test. Yes, we would like to replace the world. Any second. This is getting long again, and all we've done is make torches. I'm going to have to start splitting certain parts into multiple parts, I think. Like a part 4.5, maybe. For certain things. Okay, and now, just to show how cool this is with what we've done today, we can exit this. Exit, 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 create world. 
empty world. And I haven't tested this yet, so I could be eating my own words, but in, te in theory, I should be able to use my torch, right? Yeah, I think I can. What's this? Oh. That's what it is. I haven't got the picture for it, that's all. Um, what is ours? Pixel Switch Torch version 1. Bang. 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 Test and play. Third person. We have created our own prop, which we can use multiple times. Anyway, guys, I know this wasn't the most technical video out there, but I do believe that this is quite helpful to anybody that wants to create something or save their creations for longer periods of time. Um, I am Pixel. I hope that you've enjoyed the video. Don't forget to slap that subscribe button for some more PC gaming goodness and to like this video if you like this video. And I hope that helped. Catch you later. Bye-bye.